Hello, and welcome to today's live video. So today, this is a bit of a charged title, Singest, Single Biggest Factor to Help You Healing a Complex Chronic Health Problem. This is a, a huge one. And it's, this is the thing, it's, no one talks about this. I don't see this anywhere. You know, everyone is talking about like, you've got to do the gut stuff and you've got to take the right nutrients. You need to address nutritional deficiencies and like X, Y, Z, nobody talks about this. It's such a big thing. It was probably one of the biggest factors in my recovery. And it's something I see so many people neglecting. And this is especially important for people that have chronic health problems that are complex. So we're talking chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, like multiple autoimmune disorders, um, severe like energy problems, multiple like skin problems, digestive issues. If you've got like two or three different kind of symptoms going on at the same time in different um, organ systems inside the body, this is really important that you hear this. If you're working on detox, especially, so if you've got like NTHFR mutations, if you've got mold or mercury exposure, if you're working through a, a detox process, if you have gut and microflora damage, these are, these are all, these are the situations where this is super important. This factor that is extremely important if you want to reverse chronic complex health problems is calorie intake. This is so neglected. This is one of those things that if you don't get this right, you can do every other thing right. You can maximize your methylation. You can take all the right supplements for your gut. You can rest, you can optimize your sleep. If you don't get this right, all of that will be for nothing. It won't work. And it's, it's rare that I say this because I do think there are many ways to heal. I do think there are many ways to go about healing. This is, this is not negotiable and I'll, I'll help you understand why. Calories are just basic units of energy that your body needs to function. Everything that happens in the healing process requires calories. Every single thing. Your immune function requires calories. Detox requires calories. Repairing any damaged organ systems and tissues requires calories. Breaking down scar tissue requires calories. Killing parasites requires calories. Every single thing that you do in your body that, that is a, a healing function requires calories. If you do not have enough calories, all of these things will suffer. So if you're trying to improve your liver health, for example, you're eating like super clean and you're taking all the liver support, you're, you've worked on the gut, the gut's doing really, really great. You're taking all your like methyl nutrients or you've like optimized your methylation, but you're in a calorie deficit, you're not eating enough food. All of those other functions are slowed down. The basic rate of metabolism is reduced, which means the basic rate of every single function in your body is reduced. This looks different for everybody, but I think people actually need to eat a significantly larger amount of food than they than they're maybe led to believe. And I know how tricky this is. So I, I know food sensitivities make this really complex. So I was on a really restrictive diet of about five foods for about five years. This was tough, you know, getting enough calories in when I was only able to actually assimilate, like break down, digest and assimilate nutrients from five foods with, five foods with minimal reactions is, was challenging. Fortunately, I'm in a place where I can basically eat whatever I want now and it's not really a problem, but I, I totally understand these restrictions, but there's ways we can go about this. I'm gonna help you with this. Today, I'm going to help you figure out how to do this. So your body needs calories to function. If you are, so I'm going to give you the base, base minimum, just for like a normal person with one health condition that you're trying to recover from. So a base, the basic normal amount of calories you need as a woman is 2000 calories. And for a man, 2,500. You're not just a normal person. You've got a chronic health problem. You've got, you've got stuff going on. You've got work that needs to be done. You need more calories. So at a minimum, we're looking 100 extra, 2,100 for women, 2,600 for men, minimum. If you want to be doing fasting at any point in your process, you need to count those calories that you're going to miss on those fasting days. So like for me, I use, I strategically would fast about one, one day every four, four times a month. So once a week, I would do a fast. Those calories for that day, those 2,600 calories, they need to be reallocated onto other days. The whole point of fasting is not about being in a calorie deficit. It's about giving your body time to function in a different metabolic state and to do different jobs. I've got videos on fasting. If you want to check those out on my YouTube channel, just, just search 
How to Fast to Heal William Dickinson. You'll find it. Really great video. It's a way that you can fast if you've got like adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue, things like that. It's one of those ways that you can make it a little bit safer to do if you're in a more complex situation. You can fast. I, I, I did it and it helped. So you, you, can, you can probably do it too. So that video helps you figure out a way to do it more gently. So if you, if you have these food sensitivities, we just have to figure out how we can hit these goals with, within the foods that you're able to tolerate. So for me, one of the biggest challenges was with having gastritis, my stomach volume was very small. I could only eat a very small amount of food at one time, literally about one cup full of food. That's all I could handle. Any more than that would trigger a lot of digestive problems, which would then trigger autoimmunity and like a whole, a whole complex combination of, of different things. So I was working on about a cup full of food per meal, and I was doing that four, four times a day. And I was managing at this time to get about 2,800 calories a day in a good day. And this is, this is huge. This was hugely profoundly helpful for me recovering from both adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, all of the different like gut health problems, all the different autoimmune problems. You, I, I've worked with thousands of people now. I just don't see healing happening in a calorie deficit. And it makes sense. Healing is abundance. If you're in a deficit, you don't have abundance on a physical level. Your body just doesn't have the nutrients that it needs, the calories that it needs to run, to function, to heal. So moving closer to that abundant state means your body needs to have an abundant amount of energy, abundant amount of resources. So we need to figure out how we can get them in wherever you're at. And often the best way to do this is just you already know what your safe foods are. Just eat more of them. That is the best way to go about it, especially the fats. The fats are the most calorie dense. Proteins and carbs, you've got four calories per gram. For fats, you've got nine calories per gram. So if you can double your fat intake, you're gonna massively increase your total calorie intake. And then yeah, you might have challenges like gallbladder problems. I don't know your, your individual circumstance right now. I'm trying to speak generally because it's a video. I'm trying to make it work for as many people as possible. Whatever works for you, do more of it. Just eat more of it. And you will be amazed at what happens. A lot of people think that they have chronic fatigue syndrome or adrenal fatigue. The fact is, if you take a completely healthy person and you put them on a calorie restrictive diet, they develop health problems. They don't have any energy. Their sleep gets really bad. That's just what happens. That's just what happens when you don't have enough energy inside your body. So a lot of problems can, that, that you might be attaching to being chronic health problems, they might actually not be related to them at all. They might just be normal things that happen to a normal person in a circumstance where they don't have enough food calories. So that's a really tricky one because when you do have a lot of health problems, it's hard to attach things to certain things and understand if this is connected to that or if that's connected to this. But if you're eating, and I, have, I genuinely have like, I would say a good, a third to half of the people that, that come and work with me, they're eating under 1800 calories a day, which is just, it's, it's not enough. It's, it's so low. You're, the best thing you can do to help your adrenal glands recover is get enough sleep and, and eat a calorie uh, calorie surplus, the best thing. So if you're doing like, if you're trying to heal adrenal fatigue and you're doing adaptogens and you're, you're doing like nervous system work and you're doing meditation, you're doing all of these things and you're not eating enough calories on the, like a basic level, your adrenal glands, they just don't have the energy to feel safe and to function. You, you need, you just need this energy. Everything is dictated by this. Every function of your digestive system, stomach acid being secreted, digestive enzymes being created and secreted, bile, packaging up those toxins, being secreted, emulsifying fats. All of this costs calories. It all takes energy. So it's, I've seen this as well. I've, had, I've seen people that have digestive problems and they have food sensitivities to certain food groups simply because they don't eat enough calories. They don't have enough calories. It's like if your body has the machinery and the mechanisms and it's like the genetics are fine, it's got the machinery, it's got everything that it needs to process histamines or salicylates or oxalates, but it doesn't have enough caloric energy, it cannot do it. And then you will develop a food sensitivity. But it doesn't mean you actually have a food sensitivity in this circumstance. It just means your body is missing the resources that it needs to process these nutrients out. And if you were to provide it with excess nutrients, it, it, the capacity to handle these things increases and the intolerances can go away. I've seen this. I've seen this happen in a, a span of little as two weeks. You know, going from like maximum level, like debilitating, histamine, salicylate or oxalate reactions to like eat for, even to like mild or even no reaction whatsoever, just increasing calories by, in some cases, up to like eight or 900 per day. And if you're, if you, if you're looking at your calories now and you're thinking they're a bit low, okay, so how do we even do that? 
track your food just for one day. You don't have to track it every single day. Just one day every two weeks, track every single thing that you eat. My favorite app is to use uh, an app on Android called MyPlate. There are others you can use. There's some on Apple. You can use like MyFitnessPal. I find some of them aren't very accurate. Like avocados on MyFitnessPal were not close to reality. They had way more carbs than avocados actually have and way less fat. MyPlate, I find, has got better, it's more accurate suggestions. Stick everything in there that you eat for a day. And I'll, I'll, I'll l- let me say this, I'll even review it for you. So you can send it to me in Facebook Messenger or you can shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk. Take a picture of, your, of what you eat in a day, send it to me, I'll review it for you completely for free just to help you understand where you can make some tweaks and some some changes, some improvements. And if your calorie intake is low, if it's like below 1800 calories, like you're gonna have a really hard time healing regardless of what it is that you're healing from because your body just doesn't have the metabolic energy that it needs to do things. It just doesn't have the energy. And healing is expensive. Immune function is expensive. Detoxification is expensive. And if your body doesn't have calories, these are the first things that are gonna get down regulated. And if you're doing all of these other things to try and heal, you know, you're taking binders, you're doing detoxes, you're juicing, you're doing all these other things to try and help your body heal, but you don't have enough like basic caloric metabolic energy. It's like you're doing a lot of effort and you could do something that's a hell of a lot easier and gives you far better results. It's just eat more, provide your body more of those basic caloric nutrients that it needs. So you need to feed yourself first. One of these challenges is especially with the importance of the gut and the microbiome, you think, okay, but I want to eat so that I feed my gut. You know, I need to eat all this fiber and I need to eat all these vegetables and I need to eat all these polyphenols. And yes, that's true. However, feed yourself first. You have to feed your own body first. Your microflora is directly influenced by the state of your immune system. If you're in a calorie deficit, your immune system is the first thing that will go. It's, the, it's one of the most expensive things. Think about when someone that has a very strong immune system and is very healthy gets sick. What happens? that they, they generate this fever and they're extremely hot. Like, that costs so many calories, you could not even believe. And if your body doesn't have enough caloric energy, it's never gonna do that. It's never gonna use that energy in that way because it, it's trying to save it just to survive, just to stay alive. Your body needs to have this surplus before it feels safe to, to trigger strong detox reactions, to trigger strong immune responses, to move your body back to health. You need this. Feed your body first, So this mainly looks like it's really the fats and the carbs. You need protein just sort of to function, but it's not a good fuel source. Like calories from protein is not not the way that I would go. You really wanna be getting these calories from carbs if you tolerate them and from fats if you tolerate them. Protein's really important for lots of different functions. I just did a post the other day on Facebook about how important proteins are because they give you glutamine and glycine and the, the ingredients you need for detox. And it's really, really important. However, it's not a good calorie source. The amount of metabolic energy that it takes to extract calories from, po- from protein is, is a terrible ratio. It's not, it's not very good. And your body is not stupid. You, calories are just an idea that the, of, of, of burning fuel to produce a certain amount of heat. Your body is not a furnace. It doesn't just burn food. It doesn't work like that. Your body is a biochemical machine. So protein is not used for calories. It's very rare that your body is using protein for calories. It uses protein to do jobs like detoxification, repairing cells, building muscles, those kinds of things. Your body really wants to use carbs and fats for fuel because they're actually what they're, they're what your body's really designed to run on is the carbs and the fat, not the protein. So protein is important for different reasons, but don't try to increase protein to increase calorie intake. That's not the way to do it. You need the carbs and you need the fats. They're what your body wants to run on. Do whatever works for you and if, if, you're, if you're concerned about having certain things, for example, say you've, you've been on the candida diet, you know, you're avoiding all carbs, you're avoiding all of the sugars and stuff. If you eat sugars and carbs and you don't feel worse, you just feel the same, eat carbs, it's fine. Your body is telling you whether it's hurting you or helping you every second with every meal. So don't just do what the internet says, listen to your body. If you eat carbs and you actually feel better and you're not doing it because somebody on the internet told you not to, just let that statement, like sit with that statement for a minute and think about whether what, like, what you should actually be doing. Because if you can eat carbs and feel better doing it, you should definitely be eating carbs. Because the way that you feel is an indicator of, of where your health is moment to moment. 
if you're feeling better, if you have more energy, if you're sleeping better, if you feel happier, if you have more positive emotion, you are healing. If your energy is lower, if you feel crap, if you're having reactions, if you're not feeling good, that's, that, that's not helpful. So stop doing the things that do that and start doing more of those things that help you. Just because someone on the internet said, don't do it because it's a bad thing, listen to your body. Your body knows what it's doing. Your body is smarter than me. Your body is smarter than any other doctor. It's smarter than any other practitioner. Listen to your body. If you feel better doing it, then do it. And universally, people feel better when they eat more calories because the whole calories in, calories out model is ancient. It's prehistoric science. It, it just simply doesn't work like that. And healing in a calorie deficit is, I don't want to say impossible, but it's very, very hard. And healing is already challenging. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Make sure you're giving your body what it needs. Get that calorie intake up. So minimum, minimum for women, 2,100. For men, 2,600. I was doing 2,800, it worked really good for me. When I broke, when I had a breakthrough and healed all of my food sensitivities kind of overnight, and I could eat carbs again without reactions, I could eat anything I wanted without reactions, for a period of about six to eight weeks, I was eating 7,000 plus calories a day. That is what my body needed at the time. That's what my appetite told me that I needed. And since then, my energy has been through the roof, heal, adrenal fatigue, massive improvements, just huge improvements across the board. Your body needs calories to heal. If you're in a calorie deficit, that is going to make it really, really hard. And it's already challenging. Don't make it harder than it has to be. That's everything for today. Hope you find it really interesting. If you have any questions, do let me know. And if you want to send me a screenshot of you tracking your food for a day, I'll be really happy to review it and give you some feedback. Just shoot it over to my email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk. Hope you find it really helpful. See you in the next one. Bye. So anyone that's live, I'm just going to see if we have questions. I'll cut that for the for the video that. So I take these lives and I repost them as videos. But I just want to see if we have any comments. And if we don't, that's totally fine. But if you do have any questions, do let me know. I'll sit here for another, say, 20 seconds. So if you have a question, let me know. Don't think we've got any questions. So I'll catch you soon. See you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.